We ready to go? Yes. All right, I've been uh, pondering very deeply as to how to visualize for sinners, because I want to make believers out of you, and without a sign, you don't believe. And try to visualize to capture the essence of meditation. Meditation is very, a very private thing. And the truth of the matter is that, putting it rather simply, that it, all the problems in the world come from not being able to sit still in a room. And if you could learn to sit still in a room in the right way, then you could solve all of your problems. It's a progression. There wouldn't be a problem you couldn't solve. There is no problem, forgive me for sounding as though I was bragging, but there is no problem that I can't relate to. See, the, the Jesus died on a cross, and you think, well, that's, he didn't handle that very good. He dealt with it in a right way. So, you handle the things you can handle, and the things you can't handle, you learn to deal without overreacting to them. If you're going to be hung on a cross, you might as well go with dignity rather than kicking and screaming like a maniac. Won't help your case a bit. Because that's what the adversary wants you to do. Before they take you, they want to take your soul first. They want to make you react or overreact. And then they've got you on this side of hell rather than the other side of heaven. So the secret now, from now onwards, what you have to learn to do is to deal with stress perfectly. You mustn't let a moment go by once the process begins. Once you get the hang of it, if you pardon the expression, um, where you're found wanting as far as dealing with temptation or stress incorrectly. You mustn't be found wanting in that area. You never know when you're going to die. And if you keep overreacting and overreacting, you'll always do the wrong thing. You'll always produce the wrong answers. And one day, the, the sum total of all your wrong reacting, you'll be in a severe danger, and then you'll overreact to that one. I mean, you really overreact. And when you, where you could have escaped, it will kill you. You could die from a heart attack. You could plead too much for your life with a mugger. And he'll just see you sniveling and screaming, say, don't kill me, I've got a wife and children. <laughs> you little turkey. <laughs> Have you ever felt that way with somebody who's weak? You feel like you want to wring their necks? Women feel that way with men, don't they, when they're weak? <laughs> feel like you want to stomp on them. <laughs> I'm getting off the subject a little bit, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not without humor. <laughs> but getting back to sitting still in a room, before I got off into the wild blue yonder, the science of being human is learning to deal with stress, with grace. Now, grace is a word we don't, many of us understand. We deal with stress with alcohol, we deal with stress with, you know, pills and five milligrams of this and six milligrams of that. And of course, we may not react. We can deal with stress calmly, smoking. <laughs> you, you know, you, you, you prepare yourself so you don't feel the pain before and then the guilt afterwards, you see. <laughs> See, so you're smoking all the time as a buffer against stress, but really you're still reacting no matter how many pills you take. You're just not aware that you're reacting. You're still reacting. The cigarette just blocks off the reaction so that you don't see it, so you don't feel, have to feel betray your incompetence or lack of confidence. But there is a perfect way. Things are going to go wrong if you don't react right. That's all there is to it. Things are going to go wrong if you don't react correctly. I mean, th through a wrong reaction comes the ugliness of the world into you and out of you. And if you, and through a correct reaction, which is no reaction at all, 
we'll get to what I mean by that in a moment, then the evil can't get into you, the cruelty, the will of others can't, there's the word, the will of others can't get into you, but the good, the purpose for which you were creator, created, is able to project. There's a war going on between good and evil, and it meets in this, in this arena of life as a reaction or no reaction. It's either you, you're a, you're a, you triumph because you don't react, the evidence you have grace, that is the evidence to your adversary that you have something that is indefatigable, undefeatable, right? It's, it's evidence to them because the victory of the, of the ad, um, aggressor, adversary, is complete in your failing to deal with them right. Your failure is their victory, whether you're dealing with your mother, your father, anyone. So, that's what I've discovered, that the whole secret of life rests in this art. That there is nothing that is wrong with you now that cannot be cured this way. Nothing wrong with your family that cannot be cured that way. Nothing wrong with your life, your business affairs, your love life, or anything else, as, that, as far as that is concerned, your money affairs, that can't be cured. I mean completely cured while strengthening the spirit, your character at the same time, by learning how not to willfully, I'm adding little words, right? Not to act willfully or react willfully to another's attempt to willfully make you react. See that? There's a will there. You meet it with your will. What they need to do is meet it with another will. Greater is that in me than, than that is in thee. And what is in thee is will. What is in me is no will. Not my will, but uh, that the will. Thy will. That's what people meet. That's what people must meet in you, not you personally. When they're attacking you, they're not attacking you, they're attacking something higher than both of you and something infinitely stronger and it frightens them. They recognize it as authority. Immediately you become their authority. They are struck dumb. They're terrified. They live by causing you to react. That is their sex. That's what their success, their evolution of wickedness and willfulness depends on. You all following that? It's very simple, isn't it? Now, that's the problem. That's the problem we have to solve. And I'm asking you now not to look. For any other reason, I think you've been searching all your life for the reason for your dilemmas, and you find all kinds of reasons, and then you try to solve your problems on the basis of that reasoning, right? And what happens? Your problems get worse because the, the root of your problem is still in reaction. You're reacting, you're obeying the impulses of another person's will. Now here we're coming to the point. You are obeying another person's will through the way you react. And the nervous system, there's a nervous system. I don't know the scientific names of it. I don't give two hoots. We, we wouldn't care the tinker's cuss, if we knew its name. All I know is that we have a nervous system, some kind of means of mind, feeling, action, communication, expression, which dramatizes our own will, but which, through reaction, gets displaced by somebody else's will. Um, I must admit that I'm not very knowledgeable of, of, of the human body and how it all works. As far as taking out people's brains and studying people's brains, and I'm much more, more knowledgeable in the practical sense. I know if I press button A, it will lead to button B. And I know, I know all the buttons are in me, but I don't know how they work. I just know if I don't press it, or somebody else presses it, I start doing what other people want me to do. And I am not able to turn it off if I can't find the button again, if the lights go out. So, what we're looking for now is a particular button and in the mind somewhere where we can focus on it and concentrate on it enough to sort of turn it on and turn it off and sort of 
It's like turning on the inner lights, like in this room. We turn all the lights and the cameras whirl, and I pick up the telephone and I dial you, and boop, 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 and I get, and the electricity carries me to the other end, and I can talk to you. Without the electricity, I don't talk to you on the other end. I was talking to you a few moments ago, and electricity was cut off. I was just talking to myself. So if you, you're talking to yourself if you're cut off, if you're not able, what separates you from, from, your, from you communicating with you is that reaction. Short circuits everything. So we've got this nervous system. So when you do this, see, I, I look at my hand and I say, well, isn't that interesting? Look at that. Look, I can will it to do all kinds of things, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's magic. You know, I can tell it what to do, and it, I put strength behind it, and I can help pick up a, a feather with it. It's just the most amazing piece of equipment, and it's amazing that my mind can tell my hand what to do, and it will do it. Faithful servant, right? And uh, the trouble is, under hypnosis, which most people are under to varying degrees and don't know it, this hand will do what somebody else to do it. It says, okay, pick up the handkerchief and throw it up in the air. I'm just making something up. Well, that hand will just pick up the handkerchief and throw it up in the air. It'll do anything it's told to do, just, but somebody else's mind gets in the way of your mind when it talks to that hand. When you put a person under hypnosis, that hand no longer belongs to you. But the mechanism of talking to this hand, see, <laughs> what you will think and what you shall do and how you shall live your life and what investments you make and who you shall pick out for a wife and a husband, how you deal with your children, this is coming from some other place. And you just do it and something is getting between you and you. Well, I want to demonstrate that this evening. Are you, are you pretty hot this evening? Well, bear it. It's going to get hotter. <laughs> See if you can control that hand for a moment. You're not going to get any cooler. Just relax a little bit. Just relax and stop fanning yourself because you won't be able to hear what I'm saying. It's like a nervous twitch. It's not that hot in here. And even if it is, be conscious that all the fanning in the world is not going to really keep you that much cooler, is it? It's just going to keep you from seeing what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's a distraction. I tell you, it's going to get harder. <laughs> See if you can live with it for a few minutes. All right, well, what I want to do is this. Is I want to hypnotize somebody. Do I have any volunteers? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to show, I would like to do the meditation this evening after the hypnosis. And what I'd like to do visually so that you can actually see this the process at work. I want to show you how the hypnosis, the kind of hypnosis, which I am going to teach, show you, uh, and how it becomes meditation. How instead of me, making you do what you're told to do, you can make you do what you tell yourself to do. Oh, and I want to make sure that you understand there's a very slight difference. Uh, you don't talk to yourself when you tell yourself what to do in the new way that you're going to learn. You're not going to say to yourself, oh, hand move, and, and I, I've, I will now program myself to do this and do that. It won't work. Your own ego mustn't be talking to you. It must be, your own ego must be set aside. It's your common sense that's going to talk to you. What I'm going to do in order to be effective, see, I could actually hypnotize you and say, now next time you say to yourself, do this or do that, and you talk to yourself to make yourself do this or that, you can actually sort of, what, what, what happens is that you short circuit your, your own knowing and really that's is still the extension of somebody's influence on you. For instance, if I, if somebody else hypnotizes you 
and I deprogram you, but then you're still programmed by me. When is the influence of the world going to end? It's only when the influence of the spirit comes in. When you do, what you realize is right without the spoken word. The spoken word is the extension of another human will, or your own will, or some, or you are able to control yourself through the permission of another person's will. He could take that away just as easy. You're still under his influence. See what I'm saying? We are going to try to make a, you are following, aren't you? You don't have to be experts to hear what I'm saying. Most experts couldn't understand what I was saying. They don't have any understanding of, of these delicate principles. What we are wanting you to do is to learn or discover how to discover for yourself and let the act of discovering it dramatize itself naturally, short-circuiting any thinking types of programs. Like, I will do this and I, you see, you, you do that to yourself all the time. I will study hard, you, you resolve this, and you resolve that, and you promise this, and you, you hear yourself saying, I promise I'm going to do it, yes, I, but you can't make yourself do it. Other people can make yourself break your promise. And if you love somebody enough and you need their approval, you'll do anything they say, and you'll do what they say, but you can't make yourself do what you know is right. See? You, you've got that picture, haven't you? What I want from you is perfection and it's not hard to attain. It's miserable living the way you're living. You know, thinking through everything and telling yourself with that little voice, do this and do that. And yet you find even then, no matter how much you struggle to make yourself do what you know you ought to do, something is stronger than you and makes you do it well, against your will anyway. Is that correct? Yeah. And that's because you haven't got hold of your, that nervous system which should simply naturally obey you. In innocence it would. But in sin, something else has displaced that. Another will has displaced divine will. And then with your will, you struggle to overcome the will that other people have put in you. You get angry with yourself. And you strain. And you struggle to, to, to defy what others are making you try to do, trying to make you do. And you go sometimes the complete opposite to the point of absurdity. Or you end up giving in, getting a puppy dog gesture of approval. So, to make it simple again, what I'm trying to get you to do, forgive me for being repetitive, is to put your consciousness in such a frame of mind as to be able to perceive knowledge, direction from within you, and not depend upon a displaced form of direction from outside you. Because in your fallen state, you fall from direction and you fall from power. As you fall from grace, you fall from the power that will move you from within. And you run on a different en energy. It's like so suddenly falling from AC to DC, or DC to AC. Your, your, your machinery, does, it works, but it doesn't work well, and that's death. You're running on a different kind of energy from a different source, and it's a sort of a substitute. And your body tries to evolve or adapt to accommodate this energy. And you feel, you feel clumsy, awkward, oafish, animalistic, thick. Something else is evolving to adapt to run on this juice, and it's not, then it's not a true self. And meanwhile, you have a lot of conflict over it because the light from which you've fallen still shines within you and tries to make you realize what is done wrong. But the outer voice begins to outshout the inner one. It's the noises in your head, the guilt that makes you want to escape. And that's all part of the hypnosis, is that guilt, shame for letting another will influence you. See, so that another will on earth is done as the, instead of the one on, in heaven. So when you've done that thing, you feel guilty. And when you're guilty, you're very defensive. And you shield yourself from 
the light of what's happening. So that you can't mend what's been done because you tend to defend what is done. <laughs> you see? So, tonight then, I would like, with your permission, to demonstrate that. So we'll spend the first part of our discussion demonstrating the hypnotism bit. I've got a few chairs. I want to find some suckers. <laughs> and if I can't, well, okay, all very well. <coughs> now, and I'll tell you what I mean by that. I can demonstrate this best on the most suggestible person in the audience. So I won't ask for volunteers, because I can always go through, around you and pick out the ones which are suggestible. <laughs> so you, some of you are thinking, does he mean me? <laughs> See how many people laughed at that? <laughs> and as I make my approach, you begin to shake in your boots. And the time I get there, you'll be hypnotized <laughs> from reacting too much. <laughs> no, what I'd like to do is pick out a person who needs my services the most. Yeah, well, good, all right, fair enough. Yeah, I, we don't know who that's going to be. We're going to make a little test for a few moments, and then we're going to pick four or five people out and demonstrate this voice-activated influence so that the victim themselves see it. Because if I can do it to you with very little effort, I'm going to put out the least effort possible to produce that result. Now, everybody can be hypnotized who's not full of grace. So that given the right circumstances, um, the right conditions, like put me, make me the camp commander of a Nazi concentration camp, and I can deploy just about every device to get you to react. Authority, fear, and that sort of thing. Starvation, torture, anything. All those things. All the mind control techniques so that all but the very stoutest will yield and kiss the boot of the tyrant. You can wind them up and pretty soon they're doing exactly what they're told. So I can't employ all of the, and I won't, because I'm not a professional anymore. I don't go run around doing it to people and zapping them out, you know, for the fun of it. I don't think it's funny, except under certain circumstances where I can pick up on influences or the, this, the, the uh, conditioning already established since childhood. In other words, you're suggestible to a lot of people. You don't know how to say no to a lot of people. That's hypnosis, believe it or not. If you feel obligated and you can't say no to people and you feel it, something in here pulling you and you make excuses for it, I love too much, what's the matter with me? Well, you're hypnotized. You're a good one right there. How many people, a lot of people smiling already. But the point is, what I want to do is pick up on the fact that you already are and take over, take, take your mind over and take it away from somebody else's influence. I can do that. I don't want to traumatize you and be just one of the orders of authorities and tyrants in your life. But there's a little delicate technique which is gentle, which will give me, transfer to me, just like when you go to a psychiatrist, you transfer your love or love-hate to the psychiatrist from your mother or father you hated, and then you may love-hate the psychiatrist, but at least you're giving them your attention. The psychiatrist has got you as the problem instead of your parents for a while, you see. So um, there is a way I can transfer the uh, control that other people have to me and then give it to you back. Is that fair? Does that make sense to you? Now, most people, when they take control over you, they don't have the intent to give it to you back. But they, when you, do as, when you do as you're told, or as you're expected, they will give you the approval you then will seek. See? And they will ne never let on that they are in control of you. They'll let you think that you're doing it out of love for them. And they'll reward you with a brownie button of approval. You wag your tail and they say, good Fido. And you will never suspect that when you're being used by your friends, see, that's, there's the key right there. You never suspect when you're being used that you're actually hypnotized. You think you're doing the things out of love. You really can't say no. So, 
coming back to my point, and I always make myself clear, I hope, that this evening I want to be able to take you over. You know, when I, if you're going to give yourself to anybody, you might as well be me. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, you could do worse. <laughs> you could be Jimmy Carter's. <laughs> If you're on drugs, for example, you might as well, you're very suggestible, you, can, you might as well give your mind to me. Although, we're de dealing now with drugs, we're dealing with demon possession, and it's very hard to give a person's mind over the, when it's possessed that, to that degree. We're dealing with other dimensions. Here I'm dealing now with reactions and transference of suggestibility and authority in the early stages, before you get too deeply into the heavy stuff of the spirit. Um, so if you're ready, will you, will you like to cooperate with a small um, experiment? Have you, have you ever seen me do the hand clasping exercise before? All right, well, will you all cooperate so I can find out who you are? Would you like to find out if you're one of those? Um, it is something to be ashamed of, I must say. So, and I don't mean to embarrass you, but you've got to find it out. And unless you are bold enough to go along with this experiment and be willing to be sort of singled out for ridicule, <laughs> I'm not going to ridicule you. So this, that's gonna, don't want me to spoil it. You need to recognize if you're one of those people, because if you're one of those people, you may not know you're one of those people. Because as I said, the hypnotic state is one of defensiveness to the truth about it. I was. Uh, talking on a radio program the other day to this hard-boiled news reporter lady. Boy, was she hard-boiled. And uh, I said, well, just about everybody's hypnotized. You, you can't mean that. That's ridiculous. I said, okay. I said, well, let me tell you as an expert on hypnosis um, how a hypnotized person reacts. They don't know that they are. They're literally oblivious to the fact that they're hypnotized. It's not a state of sleep. It's an altered state of consciousness. And in that older state of consciousness, their mind is not their own. They do what other people pressure them to do. And then they don't realize they've done what people pressure them to do. They, th they will excuse or rationalize that it was their own idea. I said, have you ever made an excuse? She said, sure, hasn't anybody? I said, I knew you were going to say that. I wrote that down on a piece of paper. <laughs> Doesn't everybody make excuses? You see, we know everybody does it too, but we excuse it. I said, do you realize what an excuse means? It's, it's an immu immutable evidence that you've acted against your own goodwill, your own good common sense. Because you made an excuse for it. If you had acted out of your own will, you wouldn't have had to make an excuse. Obviously, you did something that you know you shouldn't have done. <coughs> you knew you shouldn't have done it, and you did it. And to cover the embarrassment that it wasn't your own will, but, but somebody else's will that was acting through you, you made an excuse. Yeah, well, that was the end of the conversation, pretty smart, I tell you. That's not going to go out in the air. Have you ever made an excuse? Sure, doesn't every cut you hear it? Doesn't everybody? <laughs> now, everybody has their own private set of buttons. For instance, you know, you're all very nice and well-behaved here, but a young man takes you out and knows how to press your buttons. And you know how to press his buttons. And you do things you never would have done in front of me. You go home to your mother-in-law who knows how to press all your buttons. But I'm too nice. I don't want to press those buttons. But your mother's mean. She knows how to press the buttons. And then you get home, you start, act, you, know, you start acting up again. You start getting depressed or you start doing things that are self-destructive. And you start cowing to your mother again. And you, your life's miserable again. You start doing exactly what she wants you to do and you can't get away from it. But I, w I can't do that because why? I'm not a mean guy. And I don't really, that's not my way. So you've got to be mean if you want to be a good hypnotist. You've got to be wicked to be a good hypnotist. So what I'm trying to do is take you from the wicked guys and you sort of hand you, get you to hand yourself over to me. There's a way you, I could, I found a way you can do it without being mean about it. And then I'll give you back to yourself. And I'm going to show you just how that is done. So that you then are acting through you. What you know is right. You, 
Don't you love what's right? Don't you wish you could do it? And doesn't the, the flesh is weak and it wars with the spirit and, and that sort of thing? All right, well, let's, let, let's just find out. And once again, I'm looking for weakness. And I don't care if you're a, a business tycoon, don't be afraid because you need to know through this little experiment that you are vulnerable, which you may not otherwise know, no one else would ever tell you. No one would ever try to show to you what I'm going to try to show to you this evening. And if you could see it, that's halfway to curing it. Not seeing it, well, if you can't see, how, if you don't have a vision, how can you build it? If you can't see that other people are controlling you, how can you stop them controlling you? And if I can do this in this little experiment, how much more can other people do to you if they applied all the pressures? And applied all the conditioning and all the buttons which you've been conditioned to respond to since you were a little child? I'm going to give you back all your buttons. So that they're all, you're in control of all of them. It's going to be progressive. I'm not saying you'll be able to do it, be good at it all at once, but you'll be pretty good at it all at once. You have a start. There's lots to learn about yourself on this little journey. So let's do it. Um, if you've got rings, put them in your bag. <coughs> so I'm going to ask you to squeeze your hands together. See, that's what I'm going to do. So if you've got rings, just put them away safely so that little hand doesn't come under the chairs and <laughs> swipe them while you're busy doing your exercise. <laughs> How do you think I get so rich? <laughs> Are you ready? Okay, now this is what I'm going to do. Now, when children study in school, it happens very often that being forced to study by some teacher's nagging pressure uh, forces a child's concentration in such a way that it falls into the subconscious and it can't get out. They get into depression, some kids commit suicide because they're in this depressed state where they're out of control and they become very morbid and depressed and they, it's so painful that they often kill themselves. There's so much anger there and the anger itself makes it difficult for a person to extract themselves from the predicament. So what I'm going to get you to do is duplicate the wicked teacher. You know, the nagging mother, but duplicate it but just by asking you to do the same thing without even pressuring you. You don't have to do any of this, you see, but I'm asking you just to show you one phase that even without the pressure, if you concentrate too hard on something, it becomes hypnosis. And think of it, I'm only going to do it for three or four minutes. Can you imagine if you concentrated all day long on the Bible, like some people do, and you become a Bible junkie or an intellectual junkie? And you get fixated to women, you can't get out of them either. <laughs> you literally become what you, you, you're studying. You become somebody else besides yourself in the process when it's a person that's involved. You can't be fascinated by anything too long. What I want you to do is learn to defocus, but be first, I have to get your attention. Your attention belongs to somebody else. It doesn't belong to me yet, and as long as it doesn't belong to me, I can't help you. You have to give, you know, that's what I mean, I'm a teacher. You have to be able to concentrate on what I'm saying. But I want, eventually, I want, since you don't know how to concentrate the other way, if you did, you wouldn't need me tonight. So I only get you, the only way that, that you know how to get, concentrate is this way. And then we go to that way. Is that fair? All right. There's not that, not, that uh, not all of you are doing it, because some of you are meditating already and don't need me. You've already gone, you've gone that way already. But there's not a lot of you who haven't made it. So let's see who hasn't made it, right? This. <coughs> now, in a minute, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. And I want you to concentrate. See, this is the, this is the meditation, actually, but it's not quite the meditation. I'm going to make you try hard where the meditation is, not a, is hardly trying. 
Yeah, it's, it's just the opposite, you see. But in this particular case, I'm going to ask you to try hard. Concentrate in the same spot, like that, see. And be aware of your hands, same side of thing, notice it. Now, close your eyes, concentrate in the middle of your forehead. So you stand back and you look at your forehead and it feels like you're looking at a big cave now. Now, start to squeeze your hands together very slowly. And every time I say squeeze, apply a little bit more energy. Please, now, you, you, the relationship is with my words. I say squeeze, you obey, and apply a little energy. And then hold it. And as though you're looking through the middle of your forehead, see if you can sort of visualize your hands there. And now, you squeeze again, and see if you can visualize your hands, the energy flowing down your hands, squeeze a little tighter. And squeeze a little tighter. Squeeze a little tighter. And I'm going to ask you to go beyond yourself in a minute with a real flurry of real hard squeezing till the sweat stands on your forehead, if you can, for a little while. And I want to capture the ones that can go beyond themselves. Those are the ones I want. Ones who can try harder than normal. Those are the ones that fall into your, their heads, you see. Now, concentrate and squeeze, and squeeze, and squeeze, and squeeze. Now, see if you can fuse, fuse while you're squeezing. See if you can identify your, the image of your hands, you with your image. In other words, see if you can become your hands. See the image of your hands sort of get into the image, like you see a picture and you get into the picture. You see a scene or a movie. And then pretty soon you forget you're in the room and you're in the movie. Well, I want you to look at your hands and see if you can see the image of your hands and sort of get into your hands. Go right down into your hands. Now squeeze tighter and squeeze tighter. And pretty soon your hands feel like they don't belong to you. And as you're squeezing, you get a funny feeling that they're not belonging to you, that they're listening to what I'm saying. Now, listen to what I say and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze, and tighter, and tighter, and tighter, and tighter, and tighter, and hands don't belong to you. They feel like they belong to me, and let them squeeze. Every time I say squeeze, you squeeze them, and they'll do as I say, and they'll keep doing as I say, and they keep doing as I say, and keep doing as I say, so that they won't do what you say, and the harder you try to open your hands, the more they'll do as I say, which is to squeeze harder. So it's the law of reversed effort. The harder you try to open your hands, the more they do as I say, and the less they do what you say, and the hands squeeze together. Now, I want you honestly, but you won't be able to do it. They're doing what I say and not what you say. To honestly try to open your hands, and you see the opposite is going to happen. The more you try to open your hands, the more they rebel against you, and they squeeze tighter. Now stand up all those people who can't open their hands, honestly. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. You can't open your hands. They don't want to open. Stand up all those people who cannot open their hands. You can try if you want to, but you can't open your hands. The harder you try, and please walk up here behind me and there's some chairs. Sit down with your hands all nicely squeezed together. Okay, that's all right. Hands up all those people who can't, any more people who can't open their hands. Come on now. There you go. Oh. It's the cameraman. <laughs> There's one, another one. Thank you very much. Who else? Come on now. Don't hold back. Can't hide those squeezed hands. All right. This. Did you have a hard time unsqueezing your hands? Yes. Good. Thank you very much. You get a lot of your strength from anger, don't you? For compensating from being rebellious, right? No, well, sort of, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Young man, you're too young. Please go back, yes. All right. Now let's see. I'm going to approach you one at a time. Okay, please close your eyes. Now, one more experiment. Oh, we've got some more people here. Okay, thank you very much. You can unsqueeze your hands now. That's good. Okay. Any more? Okay, one more. Just bring another chair out, please. It takes a little while for them to realize they can't undo the hands, right? Just bring a chair with, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, just bring that stool. That, that chair will be right, right there. Bring that one there. That chair right there will be fine. OK. And you can just put that sort of in the middle of the floor. Anybody else? There's one more, too. They had difficulty? 
Just on the side here, just be fine. <coughs> Thank you. And bring a chair with you. That chair would be fine. Just bring that chair up for the lady. And she can sit on the other side, opposite. That's fine. Thank you very much. You had difficulty opening your hands? Thank you, I'm glad. I got some subjects at least. All right, now everybody close their eyes and just watch what happens. Now, I want to see if you can follow a simple instruction. Are you ready? Um, as I come to you, just, you just uh, do as I say. You might even anticipate what's going to happen. That's fine too. I'm touching the middle of your forehead. Now, when I start to move my finger up like that, I want you to follow with your pupils of your eyes, but leave your eyelids closed so the eyes will begin to flicker, right? Do it very slowly. And you find that it's very difficult to open your eyes when you're doing that, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Good, good. Now, when I take my hand away from your eyes, from the middle of your forehead, you won't be able to open your eyes. That's correct, isn't it? Okay, it's hard, isn't it? See, they're tight, they, they've lost, now your head's getting heavy. Now your head's getting heavy, all by itself. There it goes. He feels like it's wobbly, like a lollipop on the end of a stick. See, heavy falling forward. There you go. And just sit there quietly if you don't mind. That's nice, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, that wasn't much, was it? It's a little concentration. Would you please do the same thing? You, I don't have to repeat the instruction, do I? You know what to do. With your, with your mind, with the pupils of your eye, follow my finger upwards, and your eyes will begin to flicker. Rapid eye movement, they call that. And you find that your eyes are stuck together, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Now I take my finger away, and you find you can't open your eyes. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Now your head's getting heavy. Your may, breathing may get a little heavy too, don't be afraid. Your head's falling forward. There she goes, feels like it's heavy. It's just let go completely, like a, a raggedy doll. Very relaxing, very relaxing, very relaxing. Please, the next one. You, you heard me t tell the other people what to do. Would you please do it too? Follow my finger up and find your eyes stuck together. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Now your head's falling forward because you can't open your eyes. There it goes. You just feel like your head's got a mind of its own. And it's falling forward and you just feel perfectly relaxed. That's good, thank you. Now the same thing with this lady here. You can't open your eyes, can you? Stuck completely, isn't it? Now your head's falling forward. There it goes. Now I haven't said sleep, have I? I said concentrate. Have I used the word sleep ever? All right, watch this. Young lady, close your eyes. Roll your pupils up with your eyes closed until they flicker. Now they're stuck, is that correct? Now your head's getting heavy. That's good, she's good. Okay. <laughs> the same with you, dear lady. Follow my finger up with the pupils of your eyes until your eyes flicker. Okay. Now they're stuck, correct? Good, that's good. Now your head's getting heavy. Let it get fall heavy and fall forward. Heavier. It's like a lead weight, like your head. That's very good. Now, now we see how far have we gone? How far have we gone? Okay, all of you people that I've spoken to, that you all feel like you're 500 pounds and you cannot get out of the chair that you're sitting in. As a matter of fact, you feel exhausted. Now see if you can get up. I really want you to try. Come on, be a sport and try. Let's see what happens. Go ahead and try to get up. Now, truthfully, the house could be on fire and they couldn't. Have you ever been sort of paralyzed with fright and you can't move? The mechani similar mechanism at work. Okay, now, now really put everything you got into it and you, the harder you try, the, you know, you can really struggle. And the struggle is what makes it more difficult. You'll see what I mean? Go ahead, see what happens. See, so all you people are used to struggling against such things as this, and I want you to discover something. This is sort of a, a magical thing that I want you to discover. Try to get up. Try it, honestly, try to get up. Come on now, try. Try it. Give it all you got. You got. It's too hard. Heavy, heavy. Falling back. Fall. Oh, 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 oh,
<laughs> Sound effects. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? One almost made it. Let's try again. Try, try again. Try, come on, try. Uh, but trying makes you makes it harder. Uh, 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 all the effort, you, all the effort you got, you, all the effort you got. Uh, uh, you have thousands of pounds. <laughs> see that? Interesting. Do you see? Now I want you people who are now the, the guinea pigs, if you'll pardon the expression, to observe this. That that, that something's happening now. I'm going to come up to each one of you. And I'm going to ask you to try to say your name. You ready? Let's go. You have forgotten your name. What's your name? <coughs> Hard, isn't it? Can't, you can't speak, can you? See? Isn't this simple? Now, what am I saying to you? I'm saying that my voice has become her will. Do you see that? Are you able to observe that? You know, I don't mean to suggest to you that you say yes to me. Can you see it from inside you? That this is the case? Good. Let's try it with this lady. You have forgotten your name. What's your name? <laughs> I know my name. You know it, do you? Well, but you can't say it. <laughs> and you forgot your name. Could try to say your name. You can't say it. It's like you've lost your energy to say it. Are you so? Yes. <laughs> and how about your name? You can't say it either, can you? See? And you, what's your name? You can't say it either, can you? See that? Okay, you can all say your names now. And you can get up if you want to. I'm just removing those suggestions. And I just want you to be, be very relaxed now. Just be like a raggedy doll. Now, the truth of the matter is, I could do some very funny things like make people believe they're Christians <laughs> and when they're not <laughs> and say it's all right to sin. <laughs> I can, you can actually make people, you can convert people to any, any idea you want and they really believe it. You can make their, their, their shoes feel like they should be on the other feet. You ever see me do that? Yeah. Would you like to see that happen? Yeah. Would you? Yeah. Well, all of you people here, um, when I snap my finger like that, please, you'll go right back into this condition every time. Just, and just till the experiment this, of this evening is over, because I want to give you back to yourself. But just for the purpose of having a little fun, if you don't mind, I uh, want you to go along with me just a little further. So when I snap my fingers, I want you to go right back into the same condition. When I wake up, I want you to return to the normal condition, but there will be strings attached. <laughs> now, when you wake up, when you open your eyes, you see, you don't feel like you're asleep now, probably. Your right shoe will feel like it should be on the left foot. Keep your eyes closed right now. And your left shoe feels like it should be on the right foot, and I want you to change your shoes around. You will be gri dri driven by an irresistible urge to change your shoes. They won't feel right on, that on the feet that they're on. And, and every time I stroke my hair, you will, um, you will feel compelled, a stronger compulsion, until it finally you must give in to it. And if you struggle to overcome it, it just gets stronger, and within a few minutes you'll have to do it. Now please, uh, as soon as you open your eyes, the compulsion will begin. Start opening your eyes now, please. Now, I just want to show you something, one more thing, and then we're going to do the meditation transference. Just watch what happens. That's the signal we established. That's a, that's a button you press. If you, you know, if people, if your mother upsets you and every time you see your mother and she does something that outrages you, you start to react and start doing, acting in a certain way. She knows how to do that to you too. Okay.
Yeah. See, that subliminal suggestion could just be this. And it can just re re cause the reactions to begin and, and the, the energy starts to flow, right? Did you change your shoes around? Because uh, it was. Where, where's the where's the uh, PS? Can you can you come come real close to the lady? Because it felt uncomfortable, but I was <laughs> trying not to do it. I did, was trying not to do it, but they just really felt uncomfortable. Did you remember so. who gave you the suggestion? Yeah, you did. But then why did you do it? I tried not to. I don't In know other words, I you were aware that it's not your own idea. I'm positive. Yeah. That's very good. You're you're going to be easy to help. Good. You didn't make an excuse for it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Now, how about you? Up, we haven't got all day. <laughs> okay, that's part of it. <laughs> Probably got holes in your socks or something, and you wouldn't want to do it. Good. <laughs> Tough, isn't it? <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> what is this? Yeah. Now, why did you change your shoes around? It's so funny. Do you remember me uh, telling you to hip, that you yeah. were going to do it? Why did you do it? <laughs> I don't know. See, he hears me saying do it, and then I said, now why you do it? I said, I know, they felt funny. Do you hear me saying, I, I, um, I told you to do it? No. Yes. Do, now let's try it again. Did you hear me say to you that you were hypnotized and you have to change your shoes around when you wake up? Yes. Okay, now why did you do it? <laughs> See, forgets right away. And you too, you make excuses, you forget right away why you did it. <laughs> Is that the point of making that point? Are you ha have you been hypnotized all your life or not? I'm just demonstrating to you. Your friends won't ever t let you know. Your friends could make you change your shoes around. If they wanted to. And you'd laugh all the way. And you'd know it was just a joke, but they made you do it. All right? How about you? <laughs> Why did you do it? <laughs> it felt like they didn't fit right. But do you remember me telling you that... that you know, you're in a hypnotic state and you have to do it when you wake up. Now, why did you do it? You forgot already. <laughs> See, if I forget that quick. How about you? If you haven't changed your shoes around, you might as well put them on. Maybe put them on the correct feet. Well, the, that's right. The, they're the wrong feet or the right feet. <laughs> Crossing your feet don't count. <laughs> okay, put them on. See, she's putting them on backwards. <laughs> no, that's the wrong feet. Why did you do it? It just felt awkward. Did you remember me telling you that you were hypnotized? Yes. And you remember that's what I told you to do when you wake up, that you change your shoes around? Remember me telling you that? You have no memory of that. No. She went into a pretty deep sleep. She even forgot that she I even didn't hear the suggestion. <laughs> well, you're in danger. You will have to watch out for you. <laughs> All right. How about you? Have you changed your shoes around yet? No. Why don't you do it then? <laughs> 
Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> Have to. You're going to be a failure for the rest of your life. <laughs> Make me look bad. <laughs> my hair straight. <laughs> Feel a compulsion, don't you? Yes, you do. What is it? I shouldn't. You shouldn't, but you want to. You're resisting, aren't you? I'm trying. Yeah. Well, what happens if I just leave you like that and you have to come back in the middle of the night and I'm not here? <laughs> this thing off of me, but I won't be here. Oh. See, so might as well do it now. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Feel the pressure? Feel the pressure? Yes. Right. I shouldn't. I know, but you're going to. <laughs> Why? Because you like me. <laughs> <laughs> See the little impulses? She's struggling with everything she's got, this poor dear creature. <laughs> the harder you try, the, more, the more harder it's going to get. She's resisting with everything she's got. She doesn't know the resistance is going to make her do it. If she doesn't resist, it'll happen. And if she does resist, it'll happen. Now what do you need to do? You know, it's, you might as well do it now. Hmm, all right. <laughs> you want me to send you home like a bad girl, do you? <laughs> Just look at those feet, see? <laughs> see this, see, 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 the, see the, the conflict building up in there? I'm trying to trick you. Huh? I'm trying to trick you. Why? By crossing your feet. Oh, no, I know. Crossing your feet don't count. <laughs> Uncross your feet. Because you haven't changed your shoes around. See, the minute you uncross your feet, you're gonna, now you're going to feel it. Look at that. Little dancing feet. <laughs> well, I'm going to leave you sitting there sweating. I'll talk to these people over here. We're going to leave you out from the main course until that's done. You hear? <laughs> I'll do it in a minute. Anyway, now we're going to teach you how... <coughs> you went to pretty deep sleep, you know that, don't you? Go to sleep. I'm going to remove all the suggestions that I've given you. Now we come to the important part of our little experiment. That's enough said, right? See, there's, a, there's another person's mouth or word has become the motivation to move and have one's being. And you do realize when you've, you've had a, if you really meant to do it, you could really exercise total control over a person. I've used only the simplest, gentlest techniques, okay? Hardly anything. And look how much power. Fair enough? <coughs> now, you, you ladies and gentlemen on the stage here who've... I'll let you off the hook. Okay, because I haven't got time to mess with it. In time, she, she do it in time. I want to now release you for once and for all. Would you like that? Would you like to be your own person? Yes. Well, I want to teach you. You know where you're at right now? You're under the influence of a person like myself. Now, that's not such a bad thing because I don't mean any harm by you. You know that, don't you? And you know I mean good by you and I want to bring you to the good. And to the good I mean to bring you to your own God-given 
common sense. So that from now onwards, I want it to be, and I want in, in your heart, in your soul of souls, if it's agreeable to you, that we're going to make a transfer. That is to say, whatever you know deep down inside in your spirit, you know, you know good from evil, every person has that, and you long to do what you know is right, and you know you're guilty when you don't do what you know is right, not what other people tell you is right. Now, that's not the same thing. We're not interested in what other people think right and wrong is, see? So what I want you to do now is I want you to start to awaken, and this is how I want you to awaken. I want you to realize you're in a dream, in a dream state, where the phantoms or the voices or the influences that come through the dream state have made you do things against your own best interests. I don't care where it started, with your mother, your father, I don't care who you love hated, and hated and loved and loved and hated until you Mind's bo mind boggled with frustration. I don't care who set you up to people please them through making you angry in the first place. You see, some of you are crying already because you know it's true. They got to you by getting you to react when you were a little child before you knew any better about this thing called love, which is not getting upset. God's love comes through you when you're not angry, but before you even had a chance, they made you angry, so you lost love. And then you wanted love, and but they made you need the love of the world. And it wasn't very satisfying, was it? <coughs> now, you know that. You, you're all mature enough now to know what I'm saying very deeply because you've longed for it so much. And now, here's your chance to become a completely whole person. And my voice, my voice is not to be your guide anymore after this. You can listen to me if you choose to. It's all a matter of choice. But what I want to do, with your permission, brothers and sisters, is transfer you to your Father within you. That knowing self, that gentle knowing that never did push you or force you or make you do anything. It just made you uncomfortable when you did wrong and you hated it back. You got mad at yourself when you, it made you aware that you did wrong, but it never made you do right. Other people made you do right, and you rebelled and did wrong. But that, that knowing inside you is gentle. I'm, that, knowing, that knowing knows I'm talking to you about him. See? And he knows he's guiding me to guide you to him. That's the Holy Spirit within you. He's guiding me to guide you. These words are not only from me, but from him to me, to the him in you. And you know that, and there's a joy. I know there's a joy in you. There's a sad gladness. It's called repentance. See? There's a sorrow over the things you've done, and a gladness suddenly, because through sadness there's gladness. That was a sadness you've never been able to know before that would make you glad. Now you can feel the light within you. Now you can feel the light within you. You can feel the light within you too. Now I want you to come toward the light. I want you to come toward the light. Up out of your unconscious thinking. Come up out of your dream state. You see, and it's like you're looking down at yourself and like you're distant from yourself. See, and your head will rise too. Your head will come up. You notice how your head comes up? Hey, you know, as it said, you hold your head high. It's sort of like a, the consciousness comes up and brings the head with it. Here. Here it comes now. Come up. Come up to the light. Come up to the light. See, it's like coming out of a deep well. It's like coming out of a deep, deep pit. And there's this light shining and you're coming to the surface of the water. This is not imagination I'm speaking about. This is really a surface. A surface is your consciousness. Now you're, now you're, you're breaking the surface and you are just sitting just above your conscious mind looking down on your thoughts. Now you have, you're master of them. 
Because when you look at your thoughts and you can see them, they can act no more mischievously through you. You've hidden from seeing what was compelling you to do in your thoughts and you could not control them by suppressing them. You could not control them by being angry with them. You couldn't control them by distracting yourself to doing other things. Now you look at thoughts and you can look at your past. Your past will flash before you, not only now, but when you leave here, you will experience gently, in a bearable order, the things you needed to look at. In a bearable order, and when you see them, you are not to get upset with them. That's your conscious in instructions. You see, resentment is something of consciousness. That's something you have... I'm speaking to your consciousness now, like a, a father to the son. I'm speaking to your consciousness, and that's not programming you unconsciously. I'm speaking to your soul when I speak to your consciousness, and that's something you always had control of if you just knew how important it was to exercise. Don't be resentful at yourself when you see it. That's been your big problem. That caused you to be emotionally involved deeply with your problem. Because what causes you to see it is the Father, His light. Don't react pridefully when you see it. Don't be afraid of feeling a little shame. Just feel a little pain. You feel a little panic? Okay, you feel a little panic. No big deal. Feel what you must feel, but don't react again to what you see. Can you remember that simple instruction? Meditate now. Now, when you start to meditate with my cassettes, and you read in my book, there's no need to learn everything that I'm saying or study it. Let what I teach you awaken you. There's no need to study. No need to struggle with words and teachers. Put people on pedestals. Love, hate anybody. Nobody outside is your authority anymore. Nobody will be able to influence you anymore. And the way you preserve this beautiful, innocent state that you're coming to is not to get angry and when people are unjust, and not to fall to praise when people treat you as a holy person. Don't come down for it. Don't get, feel one way or the other. Just let it pass. That's your conscious instruction. You don't need any other instruction. Stay objective. Don't hate too much. Don't love too much, as a matter of fact. Don't be resentful. And don't get excited when people say you're wonderful. Just be neutral. You dig that? You hear that, don't you? Just be quietly neutral to everything that people say or do to you. And then it's all a trick to get you to upset, be upset. No matter what it is, be conscious. Always stand a little outside time and space like you are right now. A little distant from yourself like you're looking through a window. So that you see ahead of time what is about to take place so that you don't react. Otherwise, before you know it, you've reacted and you're in a tailspin. Is that right, young lady? Did you understand that? Are you going to wake up soon? Okay, now, can anybody open their eyes now? Can you open your eyes now? You went through a very nice experience, didn't you? Yeah, I did. did you? What did you go through? Is that live? What, Mike? What live? Yeah. Uh, can any? Can you speak so everybody can hear you? Uh, I guess. Where's our engineer? He's asleep on the controls. <laughs> go inside and wake the the, the sluggard up. <laughs> okay. I just uh, went. He's still asleep. Where is he? Have <laughs> <laughs> huh? another mic. That one doesn't work either, does it? A little bit. Yeah, could somebody go in there and wake him up at the controls? Okay, thank you very much. Well, I'll have to repeat what, what they say until the... Go ahead. Uh, just... I don't know, I just, I just experienced a lot of uh, anger and... Uh, inside you want to... Inside, yeah. You saw it all coming to the surface? Yes, I did. Who were you angry towards? My father and my mother. And how do you feel now? I feel a lot relieved. It's gone. It's gone. It bubbled to the surface. See, he cried. 
Big man like you, big man you. <laughs> okay. Well, what did you experience? I experienced my father also. You did? Yeah, when I hated him. You hate him? Yeah, I hated him a lot since I was... How about your mother? Where's your mother figure into all this? Well, she had part of it. <laughs> yeah. she... You always find out later on that it's always your mother you hated more than your father. It's your, it's your father. That's a good discovery. When you hate your father, it's usually it's because your mother's transferred all her hate through you to him. So you feel what she feels, so you think you hate. And you do hate him, and it's a terrible thing to hate, but later on, as you become more mature, you see that she is the one you hate. Sorry to say that. I, the women libs are going to crucify me. <laughs> and how about you? Oh, you. You had a nice experience, didn't you? Yeah. Um, I felt ashamed, and I realized my mother hypnotized me. Only. only the long one only. What was that again? Uh, I felt ashamed because I let my mother hypnotize me. Control you? Yeah. How did she do it? Through hating her. See, that's, that's, her, the reaction. Her. that's the reaction, that's the reaction, Streams. That's it. See, if I was mean, I could... But I took control. How did I take control of you? I didn't, you didn't love hate me, did you? No. How did I take control of you? Just say words. Just words. Because you love me. Yeah. <laughs> you like me, at least. You like yeah, me. At least. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. And... Uh, did you experience anything? I, I was crying out for help. I was praying and hoping. But nothing happened? I, I felt the, the uplifting of the head, moving my but head. But you didn't feel much more than that? No. How about you? I, I felt the hate in me and self-conscious about it, a shame. You felt, did you feel an uplifting feeling when I spoke about the light? I didn't really feel it inside me. I felt a hope that I would feel it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Different stages. Every person, different stages. This gentleman here was the most dramatic, and you, second, and you're not too bad. You're still a little bit hypnotized, you are. <laughs> but the, okay, you can go sit down now. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, Perhaps you would like to go through that yourself. Would you like to go through the little experience yourself? Yes. I just wanted to see you to see it visually. It's getting pretty hot, but uh, I don't know, I'm not bothered by it. I'm just sweeting a little bit. <laughs> if you'd like to just sit quietly, I can just show you how to experience that too. Because I had to go through a stage of this to make it demonstrable, you know, with the hypnosis to show that you feel better now, don't you? I had uh, tightness around my chest. I can hardly breathe in it. Any and it's gone. Uh, it's gone? You feel freer? Yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah. See, you have to learn to, pre you have to ha hold on to that attitude. The attitude that I want you to hold on to when you get to where you're going is don't love hate. And when you understand how people are with this love hate thing is because love and hate are the ego sustaining emotions. So, when you tell people to give up love, they look at you as though you're crazy. If you give up emotions, well, emotions are only human to be emotion. It isn't. They have rationalized a failing emotion. An emotion which, if you're going to rationalize anything, you will need for, to, to, to rationalize with. See, emotion is, sustains what emotion does. So in order to, you've got to be very emotional if you're going to rationalize. When you rationalize, you're always very emotional with your rationalizations, even if it doesn't show. Okay, let's do it. And we'll spend a little time at this. And I know you enjoy it. But remember that I'm trying to guide you, not by way of suggestion, but by way of directing your consciousness inward to where you might be guided. I leave off and something takes over. Okay? Let's do it then. All right. Close your eyes. Now you can... Well, just open your eyes again for a second. You can meditate two ways. You can either put your right hand by your side. The ancient Judeo... Uh, the Jewish ritual of meditation is um, a phylactery, which is a little box in the middle of the forehead and a, a strap going around the, the head and it goes right down the arm 
and they hold the end of the strap in the hand and they concentrate on the head and the arm. And the little box in the forehead had several compartments and it was divided into a couple of, say, I think four compartments. And you meditated on the word of the Lord and it was all very mysterious but it never worked. <laughs> You know, for thousands of years it didn't work. And it's too stupid to see that it didn't work. But it could work if they did it right. But they're so hypnotized they couldn't see that they were doing it wrong. See? I don't know how I got through. <laughs> I made it. I came up to Brill Cream. <laughs> anyway, so what it is, it's a, it's a concentration where the word flows into the mind and flows down like a river into, into the sea, the energy. And, and, and the instructions follow. You now the word becomes imprinted. It somehow, through the energy, into the flesh to be the doer of the word. When you get upset, you react and the, and the word, the person's word carries through the electricity of the emotion into the brain and then you end up doing it. It bypasses the reasoning. It bypasses what I call enlightened reason. Now let's do it. And you could do it either this way or the ultimate way which is this way. Now you've seen the, the uh, mystics do that. You see Jesus in his, the pictures with a halo around his head. But you see what he's doing is concentrating on his fingertips. And if you concentrate on your fingertips and you can see the warmth traveling between, you can feel the warmth. And just, just put your hands like this for a second, just gently. Notice I'm not asking you to try like the other people. <laughs> see, there's the ego thing. And here's the gentle th way, which is no effort, the giving up of effort, the giving up of ego or will. The not getting lost in thought, but becoming objective to thought. So the way we do it is that we just gently be aware of the hands, just be aware, because wherever awareness is, truth isn't far off. Truth is in awareness. When you lose your awareness in your thoughts, you, the truth doesn't instruct you anymore. It's your fantasy that does that. So be aware of your hands. By the way, when you eat food, be aware of what you're eating. If you just be aware of what you're eating, you never eat too much. Food is hypnotic. You know, you chew your food and you lose your senses, self and the, the senses and the taste and the, and the, the smoothness and the flavor and, and all that sort of thing. You can feel it going down and you got all, you got all these senses that you're concentrating on and you're, it's very pleasurable and you actually become unconscious. So if your food is hypnotic, you're going to see all this one of these days. Meanwhile, let's just get this, this part done. <laughs> You see a lot of influences that are hypnotizing you. A lot of the ex little buttons, people, things are pressed that, that people press or that are pressed that throw you out of control, so that other forces enter. <laughs> okay. All right. Ready? Just be uh, now. What are you? Can close your eyes if you like, because when you close your eyes, the reason why you close your eyes give you a little education as you go along. It's because you don't see your thoughts until you close your eyes. Because the impressions become your thoughts. When you close your eyes, whatever impresses you that shouldn't have impressed you is there. Running around in there, hundreds of them. See, some people can't sleep because of all these impressions they're caught up in. So close your eyes and you see the impressions, especially the sinful ones. <laughs> and, the, and then the distractions which cover the sinful ones, the songs, the music, right? What, what are you going to say to so-and-so next time you see him? All the plans, the dreaming. Those are the impressions you're going to need to look at. Now close your eyes and now be aware of your hands. Now you can put your either hand by your side or concentrate what I call the ultimate way. It's harder this way than the other way. But if you can't do it that way, then do the hand to forehead exercise. Yes. Either way, I don't mind how you do it, hand by your side or, or hands together. If you're doing your hands together, just Close your eyes and just imagine your fingers being there as sort of focusing your spirit on the spiritual, <coughs> ethereal body of your hands. In other words, you, you can almost see the outline of your hands in your mind's eye. Now, you ready? Concentrate on your hands gently, no, no effort. Now, this is what will happen. Effort has made you 
effort and reaction, or will, effort and reaction, has caused you to be caught up in your thoughts. And the struggle with that problem of failing and falling into thought only makes it worse. So we want you to give up struggle. And this is how we ask you to do it. Just be aware of your hands and shift your attention from one finger to another as though you're looking through the middle of your forehead gently until your hands begin to feel warm. Shift your attention from one finger to another gently, just as a way of keeping your mind in a presence and in the present. Now, if your mind wanders off, if your mind wanders off and you find yourself caught up in thought stuff, which is inevitable that it will happen, don't get mad at yourself. You haven't failed. It's just part of the process of, of maturing. You just discover the power that thoughts have over you. And you stand back, you, you watch the dream that you were caught up with, you stand back and you become aware of the dream, and just becoming aware of the dream means you're not dreaming anymore. You can't be aware of dream and dream. It's when you're unaware, less aware, that dream becomes sort of real and dreamy. So just be aware of, of the thought that just took you away. Look at it. It could be anything. It could be a distraction. It could be total nonsense. <coughs> Your mind is a madman. If you didn't have anything to worry about, it would invent something crazy for you to, worry, to figure out. So just watch it and look at it, and it breaks down. That's all you've got to do is just look at thought and look at thought getting between the flow of the middle of your forehead and your hands. Now there's the flow. As though you're looking through the middle of your forehead, shift your attention from one finger to another. The thumb, if you like, the first finger, second, third, fourth. As though you're looking through the middle of your forehead and you can feel the awareness of the middle of your fore forehead and your hands. The awareness of your hands through the middle of your forehead. You can feel the energy flowing down into your hands. Anytime you give your attention to something, it's going to tingle a little bit. You're going to feel heat. Consciousness does that. It imparts an energy to what you make a, is made aware or it's aware of. When, people, when you look at people, when people look at you, you, you feel a little heat from their consciousness. You feel a little embarrassment and you want to look away. Okay, don't look away. Look at yourself. Be aware of your hands and just be aware of them. And if a thought, music, anything in your mind, just notice it. Don't get frustrated that it's there. You can't force it away with effort. Just notice it as though you're looking through the middle of your forehead and you'll blow it away like a, a, a pillar of smoke. It'll just whoosh, disappear like that. And then there'll be another one in a few seconds. You can't go but a few seconds before you get another one. And just be aware as though you're looking through the middle of your forehead, through your mind's eye, and feel the warmth of your hands. And if your hands don't feel warm, it's because you're not giving your attention like you should. So the warmth of your hands, and I try to keep your hand warm, and if you're keeping your hand warm, you're keeping in the present. And the energy is flowing, and what's going to happen is, is that from now onwards, you will be living in a more objective state. Each day it will be more objective to the day before, especially when you use your objective state to see the danger of overreacting to little cruelties and injustices and unfairness and not resenting it. That preserves your objective state and keeps you close to knowing things in a way you've never known them before. And when you know them, when you come to get little glimpses, a flash of insight, you can't share it with people, it'll just follow this path. You'll feel the warmth of your hand, it'll travel down that pathway so that your whole body will be filled with the instruction of the light. Now, not because Roy Masters says so. Roy Masters has nothing to do with that process. It happens because it happens. That is the path that self follows. That is the pathway that knowing and doing what you're knowing is right in your heart will always follow. You will find it they are one. That one, you know enough now with the same energy to put a force shield around you. This energy will be a shield. You'll feel like you're together. So that you're standing there in an invisible shield of energy like a breastplate of virtue. And nothing can penetrate that. No cruelty can penetrate 
the good can come through the shield and get to the world, but the world cannot get through the shield into you. And the world inside you that was got in through reacting is going to start to bubble to the surface and you're going to experience flashbacks. You're going to recall your past. And when you see your past, there's certain feelings which I can't describe or won't describe. You'll just know to be sorry. You'll realize you did wrong. You'll feel ashamed. You'll feel embarrassed. Most of all, I don't want you to get angry at what you see or angry for seeing or upset with yourself for seeing it. And then you see what you're doing is plugging up the hole. When you don't get upset anymore and then you don't overreact anymore, the world doesn't get in anymore, the hole is plugged and the ship isn't sinking anymore, you're not sinking anymore. And now you can deal with what's left inside. It has no support from the outside. It's cut off from its source of supply. The light can now deal with it. You can burn it out by looking at it and suffering remorse if necessary, where necessary. Now be aware of your hands and keep shifting your attention from one finger to another because really what I'm talking to you about is the shape of things to come. Not because I say so, because simply doing this exercise and becoming objective by standing back and looking at thought, being conscious of dreams so that they no longer have any control of you. Just doing this exercise causes you to sit back into yourself and look at yourself like you're looking through a picture frame, like there's two of you. And when you open your eyes, you'll feel like a little distant, a little strange, a little distant from people. But people can't get to you. And you can't get to people. You can't manipulate them and they can't manipulate you. That's good. You don't want to manipulate anybody. You don't want to get close to people. You don't need people to get close to you. Okay, they'll call you cold and unfriendly and all that uncompassionate and that sort of thing. Don't let that trick you into being upset again, thinking there's something wrong with you. We've got something called doubt to contend with. You know what's right in your heart? Hold fast to it, because people will make you doubt what you know is right. And you know what that does? It sets up emotion in you. And that's when you became emotionally angry with yourself. You start to falter, and then you start to struggle against the suggestions people put in your mind. It's like jujitsu. You doubt yourself, you get emotion, and then the emotion attaches itself to the person and they can get into you even more than they did before. And then they have power to suggest to you and, and make you doubt, and doubt separates you from the good and connects you to the bad, and you get mad at yourself. That's been the pattern, hasn't it? You get mad at yourself, you try to will yourself not to do what you will to do. No more. Please stop. No more. Please be aware and see the simplicity of this heart. Be aware of your hands. Shift your attention from one finger to another. I'm simply explaining what is happening to you while you're sitting there, which you would not get if you were just sitting there by yourself, to just to guide you and encourage you, so that when these things happen, you'll know, like prophecy, why they have. They're not happening because of suggestion. They're happening because of truth. Okay? Keep concentrating on your hands. Shift your attention from one finger to another, as though you're looking through the middle of your forehead. Do you see a brightness in your mind? Do you like a little brightness? Like a light? It's like, when you see this light, you know that there's a light that shines in the darkness. And there's little dots and flashes of color in front of your eyes. That's your new programming. You don't know what it is yourself. And it's good you don't know what it is. A computer has all kinds of little dots and dashes in it. And your mind is being now, soul is close to the light. As it comes close to the light, it's filled with this light. And the light has a certain impression or instruction, which is transmitted into thinking. Listen, when you became upset, you, you saw red. <laughs> you also saw flashes of color. and and thoughts exploded in your mind. Energy, after all, the energy is intelligent, just like a telephone line. Its energy has a message in the electricity, and it decodes in the receiver. I'm telling you, similar things are happening. You're submitting, it's like, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy will be done on earth. You don't know what it is, but you want it done, and it's coming through right now. 
that's what's happening on earth. Give us this day that daily strength, bread, and forgive us our trespasses. You see the things you were done wrong, and as we forgive the trespass against us, you see that every time you get, don't get upset with people and you forgive them, that's what it merely means, you don't get mad with people, the energy not to get mad with people is called grace. Forgive us our trespass as we pardon others and not get upset with them. There is the perfect principle, deliver us from evil, to lead us away from temptation. There it is again. When I've said in the beginning to you that when you react, you let the evil in. And when you don't react, the good comes through. It's very simple. Now, just open your eyes and give yourself a little stretch. Now, who doesn't benefit by that? You, you can hear me well, couldn't you? You could also hear me when I was talking to those other people. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what has happened to you just now is not super, super dramatic. I did all the super dramatics I could do with my guinea pigs on the stage a few moments ago, and they benefit from it. But to some degree, you are like these guinea pigs. As a matter of fact, you're all like these guinea pigs, but less, less obviously so. And everybody has those little buttons that somebody knows how to get to you through. You know, you've got a nagging wife, she knows them all. You live with her 35 years, you know, she knows every one of them, and she's even created a few of her own. <laughs> and your mother before her set you up for this one, to take over. She has the same familiar nagging voice as your mother did. And as you start to wake up, you'll see the whole world is under a spell. Well, I think it's very warm tonight. And I think, did you enjoy what just happened? Yes. And